So now let's look at a piston cylinder assembly that goes through a cycle specifically consisting of three processes. So we're told here that we have a 0 0.23 molar ideal monatomic gas in a piston cylinder and it undergoes the following thermodynamic cycle consisting of three processes. So we have a cycle here, three processes. We go from A to B, B to C, then from C to A. So this is process number one, process number two, process number three. A to B, B to C, C to A. And here, what we want to do is find the work in process AB, the work in process BC, and the work in process CA. So essentially, the work in each process. So we know how we would describe this is initially, we start at A. And we're looking at a pressure versus volume diagram. Pressure in ATM, volume in liter, PV diagram. We start at A. So what happens at A, we know we have a temperature of 201.07 Kelvin, right? And it's at this specific pressure of 2.4 and at the specific volume of 2.2. We go to B, and this is process number one, process A, B. And here the gas is going to get heated at a constant pressure until we reach a new volume of 4.4. So what's important here is we have a process that's a constant pressure, right? It's 2.4, the pressure does not change, but we know we're being heated here. So we're adding some heat in this process. We add heat and we're heated until we reach this temperature. So from A to B, constant pressure, we're heating up. So that's what happens there. We have constant pressure expansion. So if you picture a piston cylinder, we have expansion there. So from A to B, that's process number one. From B to C, we know the gas will get cooled and it's going to be specifically at a constant volume until we decrease the pressure to this new 2.1. We start at B at this temperature. We go down, go down, go down. Notice how we're decreasing in pressure, right? We start at B, go down, go down. We decrease in pressure until we hit C. So we're being cooled here at a constant volume, but we're decreasing pressure. So what's very important from B to C is we have a constant volume process. It's at a constant volume of 4.4 on the x-axis. So constant volume from B to C. And lastly, from C to A, what we have is an isothermal process because the temperature at C is the same as the temperature at A. And what's occurring here is specifically isothermal compression. You can picture our gas being compressed through this process from C to A. So it's isothermal constant temperature because again the temperature does not change the temperature at C is the same as the temperature at A and we go back to the initial point at A from C to A process from C to A so let's find the work for each process so we know from A to B what kind of process do we have it's going to be a constant pressure expansion the pressure here does not change from A to B so let's just denote that from A to B, we have constant pressure expansion. Expansion. And so it's expanding because we're increasing in volume, right? We start at this volume of at A and we increase to this volume of 4.4. We go from A to B, so we're increasing in volume. That's why we have a constant pressure expansion. So for that, we know in the handbook, there's a handy equation, and it's a handy section in the handbook based on the first law of thermodynamics, and this is for a closed thermodynamic system, and we know we have no kinetic and potential energy effects, and it's a special case for closed dynamic system, so it's a closed system. So this is the first law of thermal, and it's specifically for a piston cylinder assembly here, a closed system, right? So we have that the constant system pressure process, which is based on Charles' law, it says the boundary work will be the pressure times the change in volume. So that's all we have to do there. We take the pressure, so I'm going to call this the work from A to B, going to be the pressure. What's the pressure there? The pressure doesn't change because it's a constant pressure. 
So it's going to be 2.4. We take 2.4 ATM times the change in volume. So we take the final volume minus the initial volume. The final volume at B, you just have to read this on the graph, is 2. Point, uh, sorry, 4.4. The final volume at A, the initial volume at A actually, it's 2.2. We take 4.4 minus 2.2 for the change in volume. So we take 4.4 liters minus 2.2 liters. So the work in this process from A to B, it's going to be around 5.28 ATM liter. So here the units are messed up, right? So it's 5.28 ATM liter, and that's what not what we want. We want in joules, right? So there's a handy conversion. I would memorize this. It's going to be one ATM. Sorry, one liter ATM or ATM liter equals to 101.3 joules. So this is a handy conversion when we want to go from ATM liter to joules. So all we do here is take this value and essentially multiply by 101.3 and at the end we should get around 535 joules. Again all I did was multiply by 101.3, take this and we get 535 joules for that work from that process A to B. So that should be B. So now let's continue. The work for process BC is most nearly what? Let's go back. BC is a, it's this process too. So it's from B to C. We know that temperature is decreasing. So we're cooling from B to C. But we also denote that the volume does not change, right? We're not expanding nor are we compressing. And if we have for a special case of a closed system where the volume does not change where we have constant volume the work is always zero we have no boundary work so in this case from b to c since it's a vo constant volume process here work is zero the boundary work is zero and this is denoted in the handbook so let's put zero there and the last one is going to be the work for process ca so ca it's going to be isothermal from c to a and we know it happens at what temperature? It's a constant temperature. Isothermal means constant temperature. And this is going to be based on Boyle's law. And this is in the handbook as well. The equation is for boundary work. So we're going to use that specific equation there. And it's going to be what we have as the work from C to A will equal to RT ln of the final volume divided by the initial volume. So this is on the, the constant temperature process in the handbook. So we know here one important thing we have to consider is the mole value that we're given for this gas. Always include that if you're given it. So in this case we're given it for this monatomic gas. So this is the N value, right? We always have to consider this. The end value goes in front, always. So I'm going to place that in front, the end value there. It's just moles. So now we know we're going to plug everything in. Final volume, this is the initial volume, and we'll get to that. So the work C to A will be the end value, which is 0 0.32 moles. The temperature there is a constant temperature. So it's going to be the 201. 0.07 Kelvin and the R value there what's the R value the R value will essentially depend on the units we're using so what we have to do is find that R value in the handbook and it's going to be under the PVT behavior section in the thermodynamics section and this is the universal gas constant but you have to know which one to use so we know here we're working with what units? It's ATM liters. So the one that makes sense to use is going to be the 0 0.08206 liter ATM per mole times Kelvin. So I'll write that down. 
the R value there, it's going to be the 0 0.08206 liter ATM per mole times Kelvin. And that's that because we're working, pressure is ATM, volume is the liters, this is mole, this is mole, these will eventually cancel. Then we take the natural log of the final volume. What's the final volume? We're going from C to A. The final volume is 2.4 liter. The initial volume where we start at C is going to be 1, sorry, not 2.4, 2.2, the volume's on the X. At A, it's 2.2. At C, it's going to be 4.4. So we plug in 2.2 on top. 2.2 liters on top the final and we plug in the 4.4 on bottom close that so these essentially cancel moles cancel here Kelvin cancel and we have liter ATM so we can solve work from C to A we get a negative value so it's negative 3.66 liter ATM and we said the conversion to go from liter to ATM is just this right so we just multiply by 101.3 to get the work from C to A in joules so we have negative 371 joules if we multiply by 101.3 and this should be our answer that's it thank you